Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight in grade five in module six, we are working on lesson number eight. And that means that we are generating a number pattern from a given rule and then plotting the points. So I'm gonna take a look at a couple problems from tonight's homework. I'm gonna do all of problem number one tonight. And then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave all of number two for you. And then I'm gonna sort of get you started on parts of number three that I think you might find more tricky. And then I'll let you go from there. So let's take a look at problem number one. Complete this table such that each x each y coordinate is four more than the corresponding x coordinate. And then I, I see here we've got our coordinate plane. Each y coordinate is four more than the corresponding x coordinate. So let me just start with the easiest one. So if we said that x was zero, what would y be? Let's see. Each y coordinate is four more than the x coordinate. So y would have to be four, right? Would that fit that rule? Yep, the y coordinate, yep, is four more than the x coordinate. Ah, perfect, all right, now I'm gonna write my coordinate pair. So let's see, that is point zero, four. And then if we picked another point, let's see, I'm gonna pick a point like four, the x equals four. What would be the y coordinate? Y would be four more, so let's see, that would be four plus four would be eight. So I think that's the point four, eight. And then finally, oh, let's pick another one, let's pick six. And what's four more than that? Oh, that's 10. So 6, 10 must be another point. So now let's go ahead and graph those three points. Let's see, point zero, 4, 0, 4. Looks like a spot right there. How about point four, eight? Let's see, point four, eight would be way up here, right? Cool. And then finally, point six, 10. Point six, 10, right up there, right? Let's see, 6, 10 would be right about there. Awesome. Oh, and then C, so we've done part A, so let's do part B. Part B says use a straight edge to construct a line connecting these points. Oh, that should be pretty easy, right? We need to get out my handy line tool. I'm gonna draw a line like that, and I'm gonna make sure that it goes through all three of those points. Perfect, there's my line. Ooh, I'm gonna give it arrows, awesome. I like my line. Now let's do another one. Give the coordinates of two other points that, that fall on this line with x coordinates greater than 18. What? My x only goes up to 12. So they're asking me to imagine what's happening out here to this line as it goes off, way off into space. Well, though, let me pause and think for a moment. How can I figure that out? Because I'm not going to be able to graph it. I don't have any more graph paper here. It's off the edge of my x-axis line. How could I figure that out? Pause for a moment and think. How are you going to solve that problem? Hmm. Well, I'm thinking that the rule still applies, right? That y-coordinate is always going to be 4 more than the x-coordinate. So let's see. Uh, what if our x-coordinate were 20? How big would y be? Well, y would be 4 more than that, right? So 20 would be 24. And what if it was... Hey, let's just throw it out there. What if the x-coordinate was 100? Well, then the y-coordinate would be 104, right? Actually, we could pick any value for x, no matter how far out on this line, and we would know what the y-coordinate would be because we know that the y-coordinate is going to be 4 more, just like it was for our first three coordinate pairs. That line goes off forever. Awesome. Well, I'm going to leave all of problem number two for you and then do a little bit of problem number three. Use the coordinate plane below to complete the following tasks. Graph these lines on the plane. So I see we've got the plane here. And our first line is this one. But this one's really pretty straightforward, right? X is equal to Y. So I'm going to leave that one for you. But I want to try this a little bit of this one and this one. Line M. Y is 1 less than X. So whatever value we have for X, Y is going to be 1 less than that. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here a little bit for a second because these boxes are really small. So if we had, like, for instance, an X value of, I don't know, 5. I'm going to just say 5. I know I saw 5 out there on the graph. Let's see, y would be 1 less than that. So I guess y would be 4. So that would be the point 5, 4. And what if x were, I don't know, let's say 10? Well, then y would be, oh, 9, right? Let's see, so that would be point 10, 9. And then maybe the one of the ones in between. Let's say that x was 7. What would y be? Oh, y would be 1 less than that. So 7, 6, point seven six. Awesome. Well, I'm going to let you guys go ahead and figure that out. Um, I'm going to just plot one of those points, right? Am I, so I'm going to plot that first point, 0 0.54, 0 0.54. Let's see, that's x coordinate of 5, y coordinate of 4. So I think that's my first point. That is point G. 
and I'm going to leave you to go ahead and plot out these other ones. But you should recognize one thing that you should note is you did not have to pick exactly the values that I did. You may pick different ones. I picked ones that I knew were on this graph because I, I noticed that this graph went from 0 to 15. So I went ahead and picked values for x that I knew were in the middle of that. But you're, you're, you may pick different numbers. There's, uh, you just have to satisfy this rule that y is 1 less than x. And then your line will, should go in the same spots that mine does. It may just not go through the same points. You may have a different g, h, and i than I do. So let's zoom in here again and look at line n. Line n, more complicated directions, y is 1 less than twice x. Weird. Let's see. So I want to start again with a 5, just to see. So what would y be? y is 1 less than twice x. So I'm trying to think back to my expression. So twice x would be 10, and 1 less than twice x would be 10 minus 1. I think that's 9, right? So I think that would be the point 5, 9. Let's think that through. So is y, 9, is 9 1 less than 2 times x? Yep. 9 equals 1 less than 10, 2 times 5. Awesome. And now that I know that, I can pick other points. Let's see. What if I had a y value of, or I'm sorry, an x value of 2? Well, let's see. I would multiply it by 2, twice x, so that would be 4. And I would take 1 away, because it's 1 less than that. So 4 minus 1 would be 3. I think that would be the point 2, 3. And what if we had, well, we had a bigger value. What if we had 7? Let's see, twice x would be 2 times 7, or 14, and 1 less than that would be 13, I think. So we would have the point 7, 13. I'm going to zoom back out, and again, I think you guys will be able to solve these problems. I'm going to put my first point, s, on there. That's point 5, 9, so that's this point. You know what, I'm going to switch up to red, just so, uh, just so I'm keeping these a little bit straight. So my point there is point S, right? And that is a point at 5, 9, 5, 9. Awesome. So once I graph out the other uh, points, I'll be able to connect those line, uh, be able to connect those dots into a line, see where those go. I'm going to see if it's going to go this way or that way. I don't know. I'm not really sure. I'm going to leave the rest of that work to you. Whatever points you come up with here uh, for S, T, and U, they should follow along the same line that my, li that my three points would create. They may not be exactly the same points, but they should fall on the line. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Khan Has Problems. I'll see you again next time. Good luck on your homework. Bye-bye.